Today, I am excited to share the Word of God with you, so let's get started. Now, rooted. What does it mean to be rooted? Well, a tree that has deep roots will not blow over in a storm, will it? The wind doesn't blow it over. It might blow a few leaves off of it, but it's not going to blow over. And likewise, when you're rooted in the truth of God's Word, like for example, if you, if you are rooted in the love of God, and that's one of the things that the Apostle Paul prayed for the church, was that they would be rooted and grounded in the love of God. And that they would know the love of God to such a degree that nothing could ever take it away from them. Nothing. No kind of suffering, no peril, no persecution, nothing threatening, nothing they've got, nothing that nothing can separate you from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus. Amen? And I can tell you, when you're going through literal hell, and you can sit and say, God, I don't understand this, but I know you love me. 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 Let me tell you, it will strengthen you, and it will get you through stuff that you would have never, ever thought that you could have went through. Because the love of God is the healing for our brokenness. And it gives you strength and power. And I remember 20 some odd years ago when I had breast cancer. And thank God I don't have any cancer now. Praise the Lord. But when I had, when I had cancer back then, there were a few things that God said, I want to hear you saying all the time. And one of them was, I know God loves me. Not, God, why don't you love me? Or, well, God, don't you love me? But I know that God loves me. Be rooted and grounded in the love of God. Another thing the Bible says in Colossians 2, 7 is have the roots of your being firmly and deeply planted in Him, fixed and founded in Him, being continually built up in Him, established in your faith, just as you were taught, and abound in it, and overflow in it. We need to be rooted in these in Christ principles. How many times have I said out loud, out of my mouth, I don't know, maybe a million, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Because I tell you, I started out and I felt terrible about myself. I'd been sexually abused by my dad and I grew up feeling like I was no good and that it was my fault and that I just felt terrible about myself. How many of you spent a lot of years feeling terrible about yourself? Well, you need to start confessing who you are in Christ. God loves me. I'm his special child. I'm the apple of his eye. I am God's favorite. And see, that's true because with God, we're all his favorites. But he really means it when he says you're his favorite. God's got his eye on me. You need to say things like that. God loves me. I'm in Christ. I'm born again. I'm filled with the Spirit. I have gifts. I have talents. Let me tell you something. If you'll begin to think differently about yourself, you'll begin to act differently. And the great things that you have on the inside of you will begin to blossom and come out. Amen? And I love this one. Be rooted in your faith. Rooted and grounded in your faith. I believe, this is what I believe, and I'm not changing my mind. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care how long it takes. This is what I believe. I'm not changing my mind. And we need to really be firm in that in the days that we're living in. This is what I believe, and I don't care what you say. You are not going to get me off of it. I will go to the grave believing this. Because let me ask you a question. When it comes right down to it, what do we have besides God? And what is going to be left besides Him when all of this is over? Nothing. And we don't need to be bowing down to the world. We need to be standing firm in faith that God is alive and that He will take care of us and meet our needs. Amen? 1 Peter 5, 9. Now, this has been talking about how the enemy comes against us every chance he gets. Withstand him, be firm in faith against his onset. I love that. When the devil comes against you, don't wait three weeks to rebuke him. <laughs> don't even wait three hours. The Bible says resist him at his onset. Can I give you a, a little phrase that will just be very beneficial to you? Shut up, devil. <laughs> Can everybody say that? Shut up, devil. Thank you. 
Be firm in faith against his onset, rooted, established, strong, immovable, and determined, knowing that the same identical sufferings are appointed to your brotherhood, the whole body of Christians throughout the world. So really, in essence, what he's saying is, look, everybody's going through something. No matter what we're going through, there's somebody that's going through something so much worse. And we will come out on the other side. You will come out. You may not get what you want, but if you don't get what you want, you'll get something better. And it might not seem better to you in the beginning, but let me tell you something, God knows what he's doing. We need to be rooted and grounded in these things that we say that we believe. And when we are, nothing is gonna take them away from us. Rooted and grounded in God's love. You know what? We have an enemy, the devil, who is a liar. I said, he is a liar. I said, he is a liar. <laughs> Wonder what he's been lying to you about just this week. Or even just today. And I wonder how long you listened to it without ever one time really coming against him. You can't hope the devil will leave you alone. You gotta make him leave you alone. Amen? And he needs to get it through his head that the longer he hangs around, the longer he's gonna have to listen to you praise God. Amen? The more he comes against you, the more he's gonna hear you talk about how good God is. He is relentless, but we have to make our minds up that we're gonna be just as relentless. You cannot be a lazy Christian and have victory. I said, you can't be a lazy Christian and have victory. Some people are so lazy, they won't even open their mouth and confess the word. It's time to possess the land. Now, let me tell you what the word possess means, because we like to shout about that. Yeah, it's time to possess the land. <laughs> yeah, well, here's what the word means. This is enlightening. Possess means to occupy by driving out previous tenants and possessing in their place. <laughs> Come on. Let's get this again. When, when God told the Israelites to go in and possess the land, he didn't take them in quickly. He took them the long route, and the Bible says because they weren't ready for war. See, when you are determined that you're going to possess what Jesus died to give you, you better get ready for war. Because the devil is not going to take a nap and just let you go in and do everything that God wants you to do. You're going to have a fight on your hands. A wide door of opportunity opened unto me, and Paul said, with it, many adversaries. And we need to know how to fight like a Christian. You don't have to be frustrated. You don't have to be angry. You don't have to be worried. All you need to know is that there's one thing he cannot stand against, and that is the Word of God. He can't. I'm convinced he cannot. To possess, to occupy by driving out previous tenants and possessing in their place. To seize to rob, to impoverish, to expel, to ruin, to cast out, to destroy, to dispossess, to drive out, to make poor. Let's all get together and make the devil poor. Yeah. To make poor and to take possession of. Now, does that sound to you like a lazy, lukewarm, apathetic, pathetic Christian is gonna be able to do that? No. We've got to know who we are. We have to not give up in hard times. And I'm telling you what, if anybody in this room really knew what I was like and what I had gone through before God got hold of me, for me to be where I'm at today, didn't just happen overnight. And it wasn't easy, but I'll tell you one thing, it was a lot easier than staying in bondage. The Israelites wandered around 40 years in the wilderness trying to make an 11-day journey. I don't know how long you've been wandering in the wilderness. But I can tell you it is time to possess the land. After Moses died, God raised up Joshua. And in Joshua chapter 1, verses 2, 3, and 11, we read this, Moses, my servant, is dead, so now arise, take his place, go over this Jordan, you and all the people into the land which I am giving to them, the Israelites. And watch this, I love this. Every place on which the sole of your foot shall tread. Man, 
That have I already given unto you. I love that. So this whole plan for our life is laid out. All this good stuff, Jesus bought and paid for it. We're new creatures in Christ now. We got out of the world. We're now in Christ. We're new creatures. And now God says, okay, I'm with you. Now follow my leadership. Follow the cloud. If the cloud moves, move. If the cloud parks, park. Don't try to do anything without God, but always follow his leadership. And now he said, now this is all yours, but you're going to have to take it. Come on. Don't sit around and say, I just feel like I'm going to go crazy. No, you just say, I have the mind of Christ. And I can learn to do my own thinking. And I'll tell you something you need to let the enemy know. I don't care how long this takes. I am not giving up. Come on. That needs to be what... what Dig in both heels and say, I don't, get this inside of you. I don't care how long this takes. I am not giving up. One more time. I don't care how long this takes. I am not giving up. Amen. Every place on which the sole of your foot shall tread. That have I given, already given unto you. Now, let's talk for a minute about a mistake that we make. We've got to talk about this old life, new life thing again. The Bible says in Matthew 9, 16 and 17, and no one puts a piece of cloth that has not been shrunk on an old garment. For such a patch tears away from the garment and a worse rent or tear is made. Neither do we put new wine in old wine skins, for if it is, the skins burst and are torn in pieces, and the wine is spilled and the skins are ruined. But new wine is put into fresh wine skins, and so both are preserved. So I wonder how many years we look at that and don't really have a clue what it means. Sometimes we act like we do just to be spiritual, but we don't really know what it means. So I thought maybe we'd do a little example. So this old shirt that's ripped up and not so good looking here. This represents the old life. How many of you, your old life looks this bad at least, if not worse? Okay. And then over here, we have this nice new life. And actually, the Bible teaches us to put off the old life and put on the new life. Put off and put on are action words, by the way. I've never went and stood in my closet and had my clothes jump on my body. That's why all of these things that Christ is giving us, we put them on by getting them rooted into our thinking, and we know who we are in Christ. Want to hear more from Joyce on this topic? We've got you covered. Visit us in the Joyce Meyer app or at JoyceMeyer.org today.